Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Metroid Other M. Yay! Uh, in the last episode, we end up collecting, well, a few items, made it to the biosphere, or not the biosphere test area, but the geothermal area there, where we end up encountering Ridley, oh my god, and a series of cutscenes happened, and Anthony, like, died, and... Adam just went AWOL because it looked like someone shot him or something. So we don't even know if he's dead or alive or, you know, Anthony is just gone. And Sam is just like, what the heck is going on? So, and I was trying to find a safe spot, which I did eventually. It's down that way if you wanted to know. Uh, but I decided to come back here because we're going to have to venture onward without Adam's advice. Back to the main sector, so let's go and do that. All right. Oh boy, Samus. What have we gotten ourselves into? We have no advice from Adam. So, in one sense, we don't have to worry about the verification of items, though. Something was gnawing at me. Communication with Adam had ceased. From the deleter's point of view, Adam would represent the largest threat. Without question, his life had to be in danger. But it was Adam Malkovich. He wouldn't go down easily. And Adam would already know about the deleter. So there's no way he would let his guard down. If that was the case, then... Why couldn't I reach him? What did he think of the unfolding situation? And what was he planning to do next? Racing thoughts started to frustrate me. Whoa. Okay, so that was a very... See, I always forget when he's... Oh, he's running. There goes the uh, dude. We're chasing after him. I don't know when these cutscenes are always going to happen, so... Oh. Oh, I see. So he went into Sector 1, the mysterious dude, which you pretty much could guess is the deleter. Uh, but yeah, so we're gonna go chase after him and all, and my god, yeah. Seriously, Adam cannot go down that easily. That's why she's like, oh, like, what's going on? Anybody go down easily? It's like, sense, sense with your thoughts. Reach out to Adam. That'd be so cool. She'd be like, oh, I'm gonna read your mind, Adam, and figure out what the heck happened to you. Oh, she's pretty sure that he's not dead though, so can't go down easily. So we're gonna see where this deleter guy is going. I'm pretty sure, well, there's only one way to go, which is like over here, which is the save booth. Um, so yeah, there's like a lot of things that we're gonna have to collect. Oh my god. I'm just gonna warn you now ahead of time that there's going to be item roundup time for like sector two and especially this sector that we're in, though we can't do it right away. Uh, and Sector 3 before we can actually get to the ending of this game and of course lots of cutscenes because cutscenes are cutscenes. Uh, that was a major complaint about this game by the way. <laughs> Though you guys probably already know is that like, oh cutscenes like, you know, they take up so much game time and you know, I don't... That's the thing about me though is I don't mind them. I've played this game one... This is my third time playing it over and it hasn't really gotten old to me. So, I don't know. I, I like the cutscenes. I like the story because I feel if I can advance in the game, it feels like a reward to me to kind of know more about the story. That's just kind of what I like to do. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We got some problems here. See, this plasma beam is, like, epic. Look at this. Look at this. Come on. Uh-oh. 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 Where's your little friend? Where's your little friend? Where's your little friend? Oh, boom. That's where. Ow. Well, that was... Whoa, spiky. Come on. Can I, like, just... Yeah. I'm trying to remember if you had to, like, lethal strike these guys to take them down or what, because... You would think maybe enough of these would actually work. There we go. I was gonna say, what's going on here? Oh, you're under the ground again. There we go. That's better now. Oh yes, we'll have to come back for this. There's so many things we have to come back for, because remember like that whole time I kept telling you guys, like, oh, 
We're gonna have to go get that because, well, you know, <laughs> we don't have the equipment right now in order to get it at this moment. Oh, I think something's gonna happen here. Something's gonna happen, something's gonna happen. I sense it. Something's gonna happen. Oh, you see that blip on the screen too. Um, yeah. There he goes. Whee! Uh, I believe that's- oh, jeez, these guys again. Seriously? I thought we just left this party. What's going on? There's so many of you. You just don't know when to quit. I don't even think he knows where I am. Hello, you. Is he seriously, like, not- Wow. For a second there, I thought he was gonna jump off and just be like, I'm done with this! I can't find- Okay. I gotta check up here because there is an item up here that we're gonna need to get. Uh, now that we have the the eh, speed boost and the shine spark, is there gonna be any particular plants that we have to worry about? Because I was just trying to come up here to clear this area up. Because we don't want anything getting in the way of us doing this. Okay. I don't think so. I think we're good. So, we all the way back down. Okay. Yeah, I know. That was probably like a waste of time just going up there to check, but you never know. So essentially what you want to do is you're going to want to go on this ramp and you're going to want to speed boost all the way up and when we get to the very top, like, well, I can pretty much just show you instead of just explaining it. We'll just talk and run. Run and talk. Uh, when we get to the top, we're going to shine spark straight up and try to direct our fall to where the item is. Hopefully I can do this on one try. If not, well, eh. It happens. Here we go. Okay, there we go. Director fall. Aha! Did it! Alright, so there we go. There's the missile tank. That was the item that was taunting us in this room forever. And now we can go and progress and go after Mr. Buddy, our little friend, that kind of just ran away on us. I'm just trying to remember which direction it was. I believe it's like in the north... The north section... Yeah, I think so. I'm trying to remember which door he went into. Let me guess, I'm gonna get friggin' lost and I'll turn- This room, seriously, turns me around a lot. I'm pretty sure it was in here, though. If I get lost, you know what's gonna happen. Cutting and such. Um, I think we're in the right area, actually. Are we in- Oh, jeez, hello. Whoa, did I just- Yeah, I just took you out in one hit. Okay, I think we are in the right area. Did I actually do this right? Okay, so now we can actually use the grapple b b beam. I don't know what the heck that was. It was like grapple b b beam. Wow. Okay. So before we go over that way, go in your little morph ball thing. This is pretty clear and obvious. I'm gonna blow that up first. Okay, seriously? There we go. Blow up the box. And we got ourselves another missile tank because missile tanks are plentiful in this game. They give you so many, more than you need, but I don't know. I digress, I suppose, because not to say I can't use them, because I tend to have my moments in this game where I die, where you really probably shouldn't need to die, or need to die. I'm like, oh, what am I talking about? I should just be quiet and regress the game. Oh, 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 I, I caught you. I did go the right way. You didn't confuse me with that whole, like, oh, here we go. With that whole turning around the room thing, because that's my weakness, getting turned around in rooms. I swear it happens in like Zelda dungeons, it happens everywhere. It's like I beat like a mini boss, and then I'm like, wait, which door did I come out of, and which door is the progressing door area? Oh my god. And I also hope that the Wii doesn't crash, because just recently, Legend of Plumber was playing uh, Ocarina of Time on our Wii, and this is an old Wii. I got this Wii back in like. Just when the Wii first came out, essentially. So I don't remember when that was, 2006 or something. So it's an old Wii. It's not new or anything. So uh, it kind of crashed and froze on him. And it it was funny because it was during the cutscene where the Death Mount. Oh, cutscene. Sort of. You jerk. You jerk. You, 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 you fiend. Get back here. You totally did that, too. Um, but yeah, it basically, like, the Wii just froze and was like, making a weird noise, uh, during that whole, uh, cutscene where Death Mountain and stuff was going back to normal. That fire, after the fire, fire temple. Yeah. Anyways. Any objections, Adam? All right. That's right, no objections. We're gonna get the space jump. Oh my god. So this is very, very, 
very helpful, especially if you're bad at jumping and you miss and stuff. This will make you somewhat fly. And the screw attack, which is pretty much like an attack while you're doing the space jump, which is extremely powerful and you can mow things down. So there's a trick to this, and yes, I didn't explain the fact that you had to, to lock onto this broken panel, thanks a lot dude, in order to activate that scene. So we're, you're gonna have to pace like you're, press the two button on your Wii remote and just kind of like, I don't know, time, it's all about timing, it's like timing it out so that way you're not like pressing it too fast and not pressing the button too slow in order to get yourself leveled, so. Here we go! I haven't done this in forever. I think I'm doing good. Yep, we're we gonna make it. Oh, we made it. Okay, time for major cutscenes because it's gonna be a thing. So let's go in here and do this. Ooh, new place we haven't been to before. New fancy door. What's behind door number one? An elevator. Lovely. I love them elevators. This is a fancy one looking. Fancy looking one. Oh my gosh, my words are all backwards. My sentences are backwards. Ah, uh, really bad day for being tongue tied and tongue twisted and whatever. Uh, save booth. So we're almost to the cutscene part. Of course, they leave these things like before major events happen, which is always nice. That's right, planned booths. It happens. All right, are we here yet? Are we almost to the cutscene? Gosh, I keep I love this so much. My God. Seriously, look at how much you can jump, jump. Oh my gosh, it's so awesome. I just feel like just doing this the whole way. Wee! -hee. Fancy door. Fancy door. Hello. Ah, here we go. Cutscene time, guys. Let's go. I'm not a member of the Galactic Federation. I came here because I intercepted the distress calls. I'm a bounty hunter. And I know that something is after you. Please, you must believe me. Thank you. I'm Samus Aaron. What's your name? Madeline Bergman. Behind closed doors, the Galactic Federation was trying to create a special forces unit composed of bioweapons. In order to make it happen, they were attempting to create an organization modeled after the Space Pirates, with the Zabesians at the center. But because of a certain presence, the life forms became ferocious. We were no longer able to control them. By a certain presence, she must have meant Ridley. So you sent out the distress signal even though it endangered your life? I had to. I felt there was a real danger here, that if left as is, the Zabesians would continue to evolve and resurrect as real space pirates. If that danger was real, then the risk of withholding information to protect herself was too great, clearly. And yet, wasn't she the one who set the facility's system to self-destruct? In silence, I praised her courage and sense of responsibility. At the same time, 
Her argument had some holes. Say that the Zabesians, under Ridley's influence, became super aggressive. Would that really lead to the resurrection of the space pirates? Without a malicious force to lead them down that path, wouldn't they continue to merely follow their instincts, ultimately becoming no more than a swarm of feral creatures? Regardless, it was clear that the Galactic Federation was ready to consign their enormous mistake to oblivion. And that's why they sent a deleter. And as for Madeline and others who knew the secret? But wait, there was another inconsistency in her story. Why go to such lengths at all? With just a small flexing of the Galactic Federation's military force, they should have been able to destroy a facility of this scope with ease. So why didn't they? Actually, there was an even more dangerous plan. Come with me. What? That's not possible. The Metroids were terminated along with Zebis. Yes. And the last of them, the baby, met its end above my head. You're Samus Aran, right? The one who annihilated the space pirates? Metroid remnants were attached to your suit when you returned from Zebis. They were reproduced from a piece of cell structure salvaged by the Federation, and they are in this facility. I gave your suit a polish so you'd be at least somewhat presentable. And Ridley in the same way. At first, no one thought that the creature was Ridley. They didn't think it had potential as a bioweapon at all. They raised it like a pet, calling it Little Birdie. Until one day, it attacked one of the researchers and got away. Ridley had played dead and lured the scientist into his cage. What was left? It was a horrible sight. But in order to control Metroids, you need Mother Brain's telepathy. You don't. You didn't recreate a Mother Brain clone, did you? It's artificial intelligence. We developed an AI program that would reproduce Mother Brain's thought processes. We called it MB. But it was just a program. It wasn't the Mother herself. MB evolved as it communicated with the Metroids. It appears as though it began to become self-aware, much like the original Mother Brain. It's really quite remarkable. That's when it became clear to me just why Madeline was so afraid of the Space Pirate's resurrection. It wasn't that her story had holes in it. Through the holes were glimpses of the danger that was right before her eyes. If everything she said was true... Where are the Metroids and MB? They're in an area called Sector Zero. It's a unit that doesn't appear in any of our map data. It's a place like Turian, where we propagate and raise Metroids. I began to see what the worst-case scenario would look like. The ultimate weapon the Metroid, would be mass-produced, and as soon as an AI that could control them was developed, the plan to create a special forces unit modeled after the space pirates was replaced. But as the AI called MB spun out of control, the facility became a place much like the planet Zebes. If the situation were left alone, galactic society would be put in peril. Even the ringleaders of the operation wanted to avoid that, but they still wanted the Metroids. 
And that's why. They decided to capture the Metroids contained in Sector Zero and delete the rest of the facility, including the space pirates, Ridley, and everyone who knew the secret. But before the ringleaders could act, Adam appeared. Adam might have known or suspected the truth about the facility from the beginning. Regardless, since the ringleaders were members of the Galactic Federation, they could no longer act recklessly. And so a deleter was installed as a member of Adam's team to destroy evidence and plan each subsequent move. But having me added on as a member must have disrupted the Galactic Federation's plans. Madeline, thanks for telling me all this. I've got to destroy the Metroids and MB in Sector Zero. You have to remain hidden. Don't worry. The Galactic Federation CO who's here now will help you. You're safe. Does that CO happen to be... Commander Adam Malkovich? leader of this operation is Commander Malkovich. I can't believe that he's here. Stay here until I return. Holy bejibus cutscenes that took like well over five minutes to show you guys and um, unfortunately because of that um, <laughs> I can't well considering what time it is in the episode and all that jazz I love to create more progress but I'm afraid I'm gonna have to save that off for the next episode due to wonderful lovely cutscenes but don't worry there'll be lots of progress and I believe less cutscenes in the next one so don't worry progress will be made and thank you guys for watching and watching those cutscenes because it's very important to the storyline so thanks again for watching and I will see you guys in the next episode take care